Hi, so we are here in Cast and Plow. Outside, it's so pretty. It's a beautiful view. So we are here with Kat. Hi! Hi. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about music, booking gigs, food and everything that this place has to offer. Yeah. So Kat, I wanted to ask you, um, what are the challenges you experience as an independent musician here in Los Angeles? I would say just, you know, making a living and sustaining yourself and mm -hmm. trying to balance kind of like your artistry, if you're doing the original thing, which I am, trying mm -hmm. to, you know, balance that artistry thing and then also doing things that are like, you know, cover shows and further, just allow you to survive, basically. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So things that are like providing a, a steady income with you and then also trying to grow your artistry. So like that balance can be really tricky. Um, and then just how do you do that? So even like the cover shows obviously are something that are in music, so it's something yeah. I enjoy. Um, but it can just be a little bit tricky to figure out like how to book them, how to make sure you have all your invoices in order, mm -hmm. follow up, try to build connections, things like that, if you're doing the performance thing, which I am. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, I'm interested in songwriting and things like that. So those are all kind of different areas that can be tricky to like balance and keep track of. Um, yeah, I would say those are the main challenges, just trying to keep that balance of making a living and sustaining myself and then also bringing myself further in my career. Yeah. Cool. Can you tell me, um, how do you go about booking the gigs? How do you usually book them? So basically, when I go to book gigs, I use a bunch of different platforms, obviously word of mouth, or if I've ever played somewhere before mm -hmm. um, or played with someone before and they ask me to come back or something like that. Those are like the more obvious answers of how I get the gigs. Um, outside of that, if I need to start looking to book different areas or just places I haven't played before, I usually like to call. Um, yeah. I think calling is better than emailing just because you're speaking to someone right there so you know it's not getting lost in their inbox yeah. or that they'll glance over it and not really get like your personality or read what you do. I mean, it's just like people who book for venues or if it's a venue that doesn't normally have music, mm -hmm. they're so busy. It's just like not at the top of their list to like go through each email and read and see what you're all about and blah, blah, blah. And even if you have like something great to offer, they just might not have the time. So when I call in, I usually find a much better, mm -hmm. faster response. Um, so yeah, I like to call in and then um, I don't usually go in in person, but every once in a while if I'm, you know, I'll go into a, let's say a restaurant or yeah. a venue or something like that and try to make a direct connection. But I would say mostly I look them up, look like in the area of where I'm wanting to book to mm -hmm. see if any place has music. If, even if they've never had music, I'll sometimes still call and just say, this is what I yeah. do, and um, are you interested in, in hearing more about what I do? And then I'll send them an email with my info, and then I usually follow up like a week after or something like that. So that's nice. kind of how I've been doing it, just like very, <laughs> very like organized, the spreadsheets and everything. It's not like uh, loose at all. I feel like there's yeah. definitely a system to it. Um, because other, you know, it can take quite a few places before you actually get someone that's a yes. So yeah. So we just got our food, and here's my falafel with the pita and salad and beets on top. And here's cats pancakes. Ooh, so pretty. Okay, so I got the pancakes with ricotta and cherry and cute little butter and syrup on the side. So let's see. Looks so yummy. Mm. <laughs> what do you think? Mm. That is so good. It actually tastes a little lemony. Ah. It's very good. Wow. That's cool. Okay, Kat, do you think it's important for venues like this to have live music? Does it help? Does it attract more customers? Absolutely. I think I've been thinking about this a lot lately, just about the reasons people still come to live music and concerts and things like that when there's like Netflix and Hulu and a million reasons to stay in. And I'm always amazed and grateful that people still are interested in live music, like they're still interested in coming out because 
it's different than staying home and just having that solo experience. Even if you're with, like, other people, it's not the same as coming out because it's a full experience. And to me, every time I've played at a venue, I've definitely heard people stay, say, you know, I stayed for one more drink because I was enjoying the music. Because music connects people and it reminds them. I feel like it brings up a lot of memories. And it also helps you be really present. Um, like, it helps you just think about... I don't know, that moment, like that one song you're really into and you connect to, and when someone plays it, it's like you're like in that moment. So I've definitely heard people say, I, you know, I stayed for the music. Like I came for the drink, but I stayed for another drink because of the music. So to me, I think that's why it's important from a business sense for, for businesses who are maybe interested in having people stay longer or want to get more clients. I know personally, um, I am a musician, granted, but I'll look up, like, if I'm traveling, I'll look up, like, what place has live music, just because it's an added element of entertainment that you just wouldn't get if you go and just have a drink and, you know, maybe you're traveling alone or whatever. It's just a way to kind of stay occupied, and if you're with other people, it's a good way to, like, share that experience, I think. So, in a whole bunch of ways, I think it helps, like, from a business perspective, that extra drink helps Mm -hmm. the company, but then also from a customer experience perspective perspective it also helps them feel like wow I made a lot of new really good connections and memories like at this particular yeah. venue so there is a brunch menu for cast and plow uh, they have soups and salads different sandwiches land in the sea and side dishes I ordered the curry falafel it's right here it was amazing. And Kat ordered cakes, which is pancakes. And it was also, it seemed amazing. I tried a little bit and it was really, really good. And she loved it. And as she said, it was a little bit lemony. So the food here was really, really good. Mm-hmm.